Let's go now to the ground floor by activating the corresponding entry in the Navigator project map. It's still fairly empty, so we'll have to add some perimeter walls as well as a stair going up to the first story. Let's start by creating a stair first. As a basis, we can use the one from the central module. The main difference will be the vertical span, since the module stair climbs 3,400 millimeters, whereas the ground floor stair climbs 5,400 millimeters. So we'll create an additional new stair as well. First, we would like to place the U-shaped stair that we've used in the module file. For this, we can use the settings of the existing stair. Right-click on the first story in the Navigator project map and choose Show as Trace Reference from the context menu. The elements of the first story appear. Select the Pickup Parameters icon from the toolbar. The cursor changes to a little pipette. With this, we can point to all kinds of elements. Their settings will become the default settings. Zoom into the stairs and click on the stair element. Open the stair default settings dialog. Change the anchor point to the left bottom corner. Enter 2000 millimeters for the bottom offset to home story value. Click OK to close the dialog. Place the new stairs at the same position as the existing stair. Now we have to create a new stair to climb from 0.00, .00 to plus 2.00 meters. Open the Stair Default Settings dialog. Click Stair Straight from the Complete Stair folder. Modify the bottom offset to Home Story to zero. Enter 1900 millimeters for Dimension 2. Uncheck the Mirror Library Part checkbox and enter 180 degrees for Rotation Angle. Display the Parameters panel and unfold the content of Tread and Riser Sizes. Select the Based on Risers Number option for Dimension Definition. Enter 10 for the number of risers. 278 millimeters for tread depth and 182 millimeters for tread height. Check mark the story sensitive checkbox. Finally, set the anchor point to the upper left corner. Click OK to close the dialog. Place the stair at the bottom corner of the existing stair as presented on the screen. We're going to connect the stairs with the slab. Double click on the slab tool in the toolbox to open its settings dialog. Modify the bottom offset to home story to 2000 millimeters. Set the building material to reinforced concrete structural. And click OK to leave the dialog. Select the Rectangular Geometry method in the info box. Draw a rectangular slab from the corner of the column to the corner of the stair. We can place the elevators where the openings have been cut on the floor slab. Open the Object Settings dialog. Select the Favorites. And choose Elevator 1 from the pop-up window. Click Apply. The Favorites feature allows you to save and easily recall default tool settings. If you choose a stored favorite, you can create an element that has the same parameters and attributes as the favorite. Click OK to close the dialog. Place the elevator on the ground floor. Drag a copy of the elevator object. Then select both elevators and mirror a copy of both so that they will be facing each other. You may select the half option for special snap points and use the midpoint of the window to define the mirror axis. Now we can create the perimeter walls with the same composite wall type we've used before in the module file. Use the pipette from the toolbar to pick up the attributes of the existing wall, seen as a trace reference on the ground floor. 
Open the Wall Settings dialog. Link the wall top to the first story and enter minus 200 millimeters for the offset. Make sure that the bottom elevation is at zero level. Close the dialog. Select Chained Geometry Method in the info box. Switch off Trace Reference Display. Draw the perimeter walls along the grid lines all over the external side of the building. Following the 500 by 500 columns on the perimeter as presented on the screen. 